wireless headphones with audiophile sound quality? Is that even possible? Let me introduce the Bowers & Wilkins PX8 closed back headphones with active noise cancelling. I've been using these headphones for a while and they are extremely comfortable and fit my head like a glove. That sounded weird. Anyway, they produce a tight, compact sound with lots of musicality and a good portion of low end. And who doesn't love low end? Roll intro. Frederick from Immersive Soundtech serving you the details on the brand new headphones from Bowers & Wilkins. Looking at some of their iconic speakers from 50 years and onwards, it's hard to think that Bowers & Wilkins started out as a small radio shop back in the 1940s. John Bowers and Roy Wilkins met when serving as radio technicians for the Secret Intelligence Service, also named MI6, during World War II, with the task to uphold communication with secret agents and resistance fighters in occupied Europe. Most likely a fascinating story in itself. After the war, they decided to open up a shop for radio enthusiasts, and the rest is history. Through the years, B&W have secured many patents, and in some ways revolutionized the hi-fi market. Just take a look at these beauties. Many years later, their latest product is a pair of wireless headphones with active noise cancelling, namely the PX8. Out of the box, I really like these headphones. The carry case is small and neat, and the headphones look nice and fit my head perfectly. These are amongst the comfiest headphones I've worn. The squeeze is firm but friendly. And who doesn't love a good squeeze? The smooth design with cast aluminum arms, fine Nappa leather trim, and well-designed earpieces gives them a luxurious feeling. The squeeze makes them sit securely on the head, and unless you're trying to score a head goal in a local football game, they won't fall off your head. It's a breeze wearing them for hours. Looking at the design, on the left ear cup, there's a quick action button used for toggling active noise cancelling on off and an ambient pass through mode, which allows conversations to be heard without taking off the headphones. The button can also be assigned for voice assistant duties. On the right earpiece, there's a power button, also used to put the headphones into Bluetooth pairing mode. Up to eight Bluetooth devices can be remembered, and it's possible to auto-connect to the last device used. A preferred Bluetooth device can be assigned, for example your phone, if that's your on-the-go music player. Two devices can simultaneously be connected to the headphones, making it possible to listen to music from a laptop and receive a phone call. The headphones will automatically switch over to the phone call and switch back when the call is over. There are two buttons for volume control, and in between them, there's a multifunction button used for answering phone calls and music playback control. The headphones have one USB-C connection used for charging and connecting an analog source to the headphones. In the carrier case, there's a special mini jack to USB-C cable provided for that purpose. It's also possible to connect the headphones digitally 
to a laptop via USB and use them as a sound card supporting 44.1 or 48 kilohertz 24-bit sound. There's a cable provided for that task as well. There are four built-in microphones used for the active noise cancelling and two for taking phone calls. Using a USB-C cable, it takes two hours to reach full charge, which will last for 30 hours of playback. And a 15-minute charge will provide seven hours of playback. BMW provides an app for registering and setting up the headphones, which includes a bass and a treble EQ. Auto standby setting, wear sensor, and active noise cancelling on, off, and pass through. The Bluetooth devices are handled in the app and the battery level can be monitored. The auto standby will put the headphones into standby mode after 15 minutes of inactivity and the wear sensors located in both earpieces will tell the headphones to automatically stop the music when the headphones are taken off enabling, quote, intelligent battery conservation by pausing media playback and entering low power standby mode. When worn again, the headphones automatically wakes up and connects to the last connected USB device. Users have reported mixed results using the wear sensor, but for me, it's been working quite well. Maybe it's due to my big head. The app can also be used as a media player by linking your music services. At the time of making this review, it's possible to link Cubus, Tidal and Deezer. Personally, I'm using Cubus and find it very easy to navigate inside the BMW iOS app. Good work, guys. So, what about the driver design in these headphones? Well, inside are two 40mm dynamic drivers made of carbon, slightly angled towards the outer ears. Compared to previous headphone models, the drivers contain a new magnet and voice coil design to lower the distortion and produce an even more controlled soundstage. This leads me into how they sound. But before I do that, I have to inform you that my personal opinions about these headphones are formed after letting them break in for 400 hours, meaning that they've been left playing music in my control room around the clock, week after week, just carefully pampered with power whenever needed. Is it really necessary breaking them in for such a long period and why am I nagging you about it? Well, because it is important to do that before evaluating the sound quality of a brand new product. I've read several comments by disappointed users that sent back their pair of PX8s just because they sounded quote, boomy Sure enough, straight out of the box, I found them to be a bit boomy too. But that changed after about 200 hours of breaking, and now they aren't boomy at all. So sorry guys, you missed out on a pair of great sounding headphones just because you didn't do your homework. Did anything else change over the period of break-in? Sure, straight out of the box, I found them to have quite flat dynamics whilst sounding pokey in the upper mid-range. And the stereo panorama was quite detached. Now all that has changed and now they sound both balanced and musical. Wrapping up on the process of breaking in new headphones, my advice is to always let brand new products play and break in over the period of a couple of weeks before doing any deep dive into the sound stage or sound quality. Whew. 
back to reality then. Trying to write this script, I was lost for hours just listening to great music. I've put some of my favorite tracks in the description below for you to listen to. Some of the songs are close to my heart and it almost felt like making a mixtape back in the 80s. Amazing how time flies. Anyway, truth be told, I really like how these headphones sound. The soundstage is compact and musical. Vocals sit nicely in the middle of my head. Yes, these are the kinds of headphones that put the soundstage inside your head and does it really well. Well-recorded vocals get some extra prominence and are positioned in front of the soundstage in a nice way. To describe the low end, I have to distinguish between describing the soundstage produced with or without the active noise cancelling enabled. Because when enabled, the low end is inflated quite a bit, making it sound more fun. Or rather, when the noise cancelling is disabled, the frequency spectrum is more balanced, but at the same time a little bit boring. Having used these headphones for some time now, I found a middle ground by having the noise cancelling enabled and setting the bass filter to minus 2 dB. It's a good thing that you can customize the sound yourself to some extent, but having access to just a bass and treble filter is a hit and miss, because some users probably want to customize the sound with a graphic EQ, a quite easy function for the designers to add in a future update. I'm usually not too fond about using treble EQs because they tend to tilt the soundstage over and emphasize the sibilance of vocals and the hi-hat sizzle. But this treble EQ is actually quite nice, adding a bit of upper mid-range and some treble without making them sound pokey. That said, if you fancy more than plus 2 dB of treble, then it's time for your monthly earwax removal. What? Hot wax? No, I said it's time for your monthly earwax removal. And speaking of something that's compact, the overall soundstage is compact, but in a nice way, because it puts the music right in my face, which I quite like. At lower listening volume, the PX8 loses a bit of its engagement, or rather, at higher volume, the soundstage blooms in a wonderful way, especially with the active noise cancelling enabled. And the transient response is a bit rounded off without making the music muddy or undefined. For good or bad, these headphones can play loud and still sound great. The louder they play, the better they sound. This of course comes at a price, your ears. One of my mottos as a professional sound engineer has always been, be kind to your ears and they will be kind to you. It's worth remembering when using these headphones because there is a reward to be collected every time the volume is raised. Boop, 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 boop. They do have a nice and musical signature sound suitable for most music. Personally, I prefer them for electronic music due to the inflated low end with a nice bass punch. The low end doesn't play all the way down in the cellar, instead it produces a nice bass punch that sits well with the rest of the sound. Singer-songwriter stuff also sound great through these headphones by creating an intimate sound with vibrant lead vocals in the middle of the soundstage. Mm. For more delicate stuff like classical music and jazz, 
they lack a bit of depth, definition, and stereo panorama integrity. But that said, they are still able to portray the music with character and musicality. The middle panned instrument sits firmly in the middle and the outer parts of the stereo panorama lives a bit of its own life. These headphones impose their character on the music, but without sounding too much like headphones. The groove, heart and soul are certainly heard through them. And speaking of heart and soul, I invest a lot of time and effort into my reviews, and I really appreciate you taking the time to watch my videos. Everything I say is based on my own personal opinion, and I would love to hear your opinion as well. If you have the time, please drop a comment below. And while you're there, how about subscribing to my channel? It will help grow my YouTube community and urge me to make more reviews. Also, feel free to visit my webpage. There's a forum for discussing my reviews and discussing sound in general. The address is www.immersivesoundtech.com. Okay, back to the review. Now I'm going to be a bit technical and describe how the PX8 sound through different sources. When connected via USB to a laptop, the headphones act as a sound card supporting 44.1 and 48 kHz 24-bit sound. When trying to connect them to my iPhone 11 Pro via an Apple camera USB adapter, I get an error message saying, cannot use accessory, this accessory requires too much power. And I get the same error message trying to connect them to an iPad. So, unfortunately, it's not possible to use them via cable with an iOS device. When trying the same maneuver connecting them to an Android phone, in my case, an LG G7 ThinQ, it works by just using a standard USB-C cable. However, for some reason unknown to me, the maximum sound level is less than half compared to when the headphones are connected via Bluetooth. I have checked this with other Android phone users and they are having the same problem. Connected via USB cable to a laptop, there is no level drop. So, with the current firmware, they aren't particularly useful via USB connection, either on iPhone or Android phones. That leads me to the wireless connection. The PX8 doesn't support the Sony LDAC codec which currently provides the highest possible sound quality via Bluetooth connection at a bandwidth of up to 990 kilobit per sec. But on an Android phone, the high quality connection will be via the aptX high definition codec, which supports up to 48 kilohertz, 24 bit sound, with a bandwidth of 576 kilobit per sec. On an iPhone or iPad, the Bluetooth transmission uses Apple's AAC codec, which also support 48 24-bit sound, but with a bandwidth of up to 320 kilobit per sec, using variable bitrate encoding. The actual bandwidth isn't necessarily the indication of which codec that sounds the best, because the AAC codec is one of the best codecs available. The processing power and settings used when encoding the music is more important. And unfortunately, it's not tweakable on an iPhone. Basically, you get what you get. On an Android phone, it's possible to choose between different codecs, but the PX8 automatically connects using the aptX high definition codec, which I think is the best choice when not supporting the Sony LDAC codec. 
in comparison, the connection performs really well on my Android phone, and the difference in sound quality is quite small. Yes, via USB cable, the low end is even more controlled and dynamic, and the upper mid-range a bit crispier. But it's not night and day, and I have happily been using the headphones connected to my Android phone. Switching over to my iPhone is a different thing. The sound stage becomes a bit narrow and the low end a bit uncontrolled. And there's just not the same musical drive. Sure, I got my Hi-Fi monocle on now, but at this price tag, there shouldn't be that much of a difference in sound quality choosing between USB, iPhone, or Android connection. It makes me wonder if the developers have chosen the wrong settings in the iPhone, or maybe if Apple has done it for them. I much prefer listening to music via USB cable or my Android phone. If you're already a PX8 owner and don't mind helping me out, how about testing the USB connection on your laptop? and then at the same time connect the headphones to your iPhone via Bluetooth. Line up the same song in your preferred music app, on your laptop and on your iPhone. Match the sound levels by ear and then switch back and forth comparing the sound quality. Listen to how the low end sounds and how the stereo panorama sounds. I'd love to hear about your findings, so please post the results in the comments below. Thanks. The good thing is that the things I'm complaining about could easily be fixed in a firmware update. And on a good note, the PX8 supports two simultaneous Bluetooth connections, making it easy to compare the sound via Android and iPhone. Also, it automatically switches over when there's an incoming call. I should mention that it's possible to use an external headphone amp by using the special mini jack to USB-C cable provided in the carry case. However, the sound will be converted to digital before being processed by the headphone's own DSB and built-in headphone amp. Regarding the connectivity, the PX8 cannot be externally powered by a headphone amp. It has to run on its own battery for the DSP processing to work. Some potential users might find this a weakness in the design, but personally, I understand the manufacturer wanting to be able to control the sound of the headphones. Now, how does the active noise cancelling work? It works pretty well in the low end where it attenuates the noise a bit. However, in the higher frequencies, it doesn't attenuate that much. So, if you need really effective noise cancelling, there are better alternatives on the market. Also, as I've already described, the noise cancelling inflates the low end and alters the sound stage a bit. Normally, you'd want the noise cancelling to affect the music as little as possible, which of course is an impossible task. Wrapping up on this rather long review, I really like the Bowers & Wilkins PX8 because they fit my head really well and can be worn for hours without torment. The carry case is small enough to fit in my shoulder bag and the headphones look great. I never read or watch other reviews before making my own because I don't want to be influenced by them. I want to make up my own opinion by just using and listening to the product. However, I do like to read comments from users because I want to learn which functionality they are looking for and what problems they might be experiencing with the product.
And it's always interesting to read people's opinion about the sound quality because it can differ a lot. I've read comments like, oh, it sounds so much better than those headphones. I decided to send back my Focal Batiste after listening to the PX8. Or the Batiste sounds much better than the PX8. And it goes on and on. And that's just the way it is. Because listening to headphones creates the most personal listening experience. And what I might think sounds great might not sound great to you. And that's totally fine. My opinion is that the PX8 sound great for some kind of music by imposing its own character, doing it in a musical way. Personally, I'm a sucker for well-recorded vocals, and the PX8 portray vocals really well. The inflated low end definitely makes them fun to use and puts them above many other headphones on the market. The slightly round off transients help produce a smooth soundstage that just blooms the louder they play. So are these headphones for you? Only you can decide. I'm going to conclude by saying that they are well worth a listen and I don't want to send them back to the manufacturer. Maybe they will get lost in shipping. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And thanks for visiting Immersive Soundtech, your Sunday in the sofa place.